South Korea's 2020 general election has been one to remember, not just for its highest voter turnout in 28 years, but for achieving that during the coronavirus pandemic, a fact that will have left many other nations astounded. Let's take a look at how, as well as the implications of the election itself. Here I stand outside Seoul's National Assembly building, where the election placed 300 parliamentary seats at stake. Even as counting continued overnight, it was quickly clear that the ruling Democratic Party had earned a big win, offering a boost to its former leader and now President Moon Jae-in for the remainder of his term. It's a significant shift from the last general election in 2016, when the DP won just one seat more than the main opposition Conservative camp, now known as the United Future Party. This time, the DP's landslide victory means Moon will have more support for his efforts to rebuild the economy post-COVID-19. And indeed, the government's success or failure now will likely rest on how well it manages income, welfare and wider economic policies. But Moon will also have gained greater confidence for his diplomatic ventures abroad, not least for his aim to leave a strong legacy of peace and cooperation with North Korea. Speaking of which, one of those seats will be occupied by a former North Korean diplomat. Tae Yong-ho, now known as Tae Gu-min, defected to South Korea in 2016 and has become the first ever North Korean defector to be directly elected as a lawmaker in South Korea. And he did so with the main opposition, UFP, which is known to be more hardline on North Korea issues, though the celebrations will be subdued. Tae's victory came in a reliably conservative Gangnam seat and the UFP will have to reflect on its failure and as its leader, Hwang kyo has now resigned, it looks like a long road back for conservative hopefuls here ahead of the 2022 presidential election, though an economic downturn could yet turn the tables again. There are various other talking points. The fact that 18-year-olds could vote for the first time, for example, but it's that the election took place at all that the world has been watching. Coordinated measures were adopted nationwide to limit the spread of COVID-19. Voters wore masks and gloves while keeping at least a metre apart while lining up. And there was even a voting slot later in the day for those under quarantine orders. We could debate the wisdom of pushing ahead with this election, but turnout exceeding 66% appeared to show the public's appetite for it. And yes, South Korea's outbreak has slowed considerably, but this election may be seen as a victory for democracy during difficult times and a source of hope for the rest of the world.